Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Chris Berry. How are you today, Chris? I'm great. How are you? I'm fantastic, and I'm so happy to talk to you because I think you're probably the best person in the world to talk to about this big Tesla movement and the Powerall uh, battery announcement this last week. Can you talk to us about this movement? Sure. So, you know, uh, Tesla has been rumored to be getting into what's called the stationary battery movement for a long time as a complement to uh, the car business that they've really been pushing. And so they're coming out with two types of batteries. Uh, one is more, I guess, commercial, larger in scale, and the other one is for, for your home. And so uh, I think the home one is about a seven kilowatt hour battery. And just to put that in perspective, the average American home uses about 30 kilowatt hours of energy per day. So that gives you an idea of, of how the Tesla offering could you know, potentially help or supplement energy use in the home. And so, you know, I think one of the things to keep in mind is that, you know, I'm glad that Tesla is sort of leading the charge and putting this at the fore, uh, but there's a lot of competition and there's a lot of choice out there in the energy storage business, but it's clearly a, a growing market that's here to stay. Well, I want to ask you, how is this going to impact lithium? I know you're, ex you're an expert on most of the technology metals, but lithium in particular, because we've had some big announcements with uh, Cobre Montana, for instance, mm -hmm. Lithium Technology Company, Critical Elements Corporation. Can you tell us what is going to happen to the demand, for instance, in lithium? Well, right now, lithium demand overall is used in about 90 different products. Obviously, everyone, when we focus on the battery, though, what we talk about is lithium carbonate or lithium hydroxide. Lithium demand overall is growing at about 8% per year, and that's a pretty conservative estimate. If you talk to some other folks in the space, they'll say it's 10 or 11%. So I'm comfortable with 8% right now, and that obviously is because of the battery business, whether or not it's electric vehicles or storage or communications devices like the iPhone. Um, it's really, really pushing it. And so what you're seeing right now, you're starting to see, I should say, is tightness in the lithium space. You've got a situation where the oligopoly, which is SQM down in Chile, FMC and Albemarle on the Chinese, uh, all have different issues, different production issues. And I think that's an open question as to whether or not they'll be able to meet this budding demand from the battery business in the coming years. And that really opens the door uh, to for companies like you mentioned, Critical Elements, or some of the other ones like Western Lithium or Lithium Americas, the really de-risked plays in the space to potentially contribute in the coming years. Further to that last question, as the editor and founder of the Disruptive Discoveries Journal, of course I know you have thousands and thousands of people that read this regularly. Can you tell us a little bit more about how uh, what some of the more disruptive technologies will be used in batteries moving forward? Well, that's actually one of the challenges, I think, when you look at the battery space is you have a number of different technologies and a number of different chemistries. Uh, everyone's focused on lithium ion because that's the one that's ubiquitous right now, but you've got vanadium redox, you've got zinc bromide, and all of these batteries have different pros and different cons. So one of the reasons, though, why I'm bullish on lithium and lithium ion chemistry in particular is because supply chains have been built. And it's going to take a long time, perhaps five to ten years, to rejigger a supply chain to implement a new, you know, a metal or a new chemistry. So going forward, you know, I'm still bullish on lithium, but I'm keeping a close eye on a lot of the technology coming out of places like Massachusetts Institute of Technology or other research labs uh, that show a lot of promise. Well, as always, Chris, thank you for joining us. Thank you.